Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. This video is brought to you by RV Deep Clean. Over 40 ways to clean and downsize your Revit model all in one place. Get a free copy today by using the link in this video description. Have you ever wanted to do some optimization on your curtain panels in Revit? For example, making sure all the panels don't have too much of a difference in area because as we all know, the more similar the panels are, the cheaper it's going to be to manufacture and install the curtain system on site. Not to mention, it's going to cost you much less as well. Even though Revit doesn't come with this ability out of the box, I will show you today how to use Dynamo to do this kind of analysis and coloring of the panels in your project according to your areas. For example, I have here a very freeform curtain system. And you can see now the panels up there, they are the biggest, so their colors are much stronger in red. On the other hand, you have here the smallest panels colored in blue. All the other panels in between them, they are also colored accordingly based on a color spectrum we can define in Dynamo. To prove it to you that it works, I can now undo what I did to the model. So here we have the original boring curtain system at the beginning. If I now open Dynamo like this, maybe close and reopen the script, and then run this. You can see right there, it has colored the whole system again for me. The good thing about this kind of script is you can quickly see the result, make your modification, maybe adjust the panel size, make them more regular, and then whenever you are ready, just go back to here, open the same script, and rerun the definition so you can get the updated set of colors. That's a very good way to keep track of the improvements on this curtain system right there. Even better, it doesn't have to be a very free form system like this. You can use the same script to analyze just a very basic curtain system like this curtain wall right there, even though the result may not be so dramatic. Let's see it anyway. If I now select one panel in this system, that's the system panel glaze type. I can go back to here now and search for the same type selected. Save the script, run this again. And you can see now we have all the red panels. They have the same area, but the blue ones are smaller. That's why it has a different color now. So if this is something you need to do, just follow me now step by step, and I'll show you how to rebuild the script from scratch. If you, however, want to focus on mastering Python scripting in Dynamo, then check out my full Python course in the video description. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now, because we do tutorials like this every single week. Okay, let's begin. I have here a very simple masking model, and in this video, I will not cover how you can create this. If you want to know how, just go down to the video description. There will be a link there pointing you to one of my previous tutorials that will cover the creation of these panels in depth. And as you can see as well, I have opened Dynamo. So let's now make a new definition here. The first step is of course, change this to manual. And now we can start placing notes on this. The very first thing to do here is to collect the panels from our model. So we can now right click and say family types. Now let's check what the panel type we have there. If I now select one of them like this, it says here family two, that's a type name. Not a very good name. You should name it something more descriptive, but for now that's what I have. So let me use it here now. Let's type in family two, that's the one there. And then we can do all elements of family types. It's not here. I can now connect this and see if it has all my panels in the output. Yes, it does. I have now 620 panels in Dynamo. Now let's give us a bit more space. So let me expand this window like so. Here we go. Next step, I want to now collect the faces from the curtain panels. So we can say element.faces. Connect the elements to here this now. It may take a bit of time depending on how many panels you have in the model and also how complex each one is. But here we go. This one is now done. And now you know why it took so long. It had to extract for each panel five or six or even more different faces depending on the panel's geometry. 
Let's see what we have in Dynamo anyway. I can go now to the background 3D preview. And there you have it. The funny shape we have there looks like a fish, but that's good enough for now. Next up, I want to collect the area of these faces. So I can say surface dot area. Connect to here. And of course, we can now run this. That should give us over 3000 area values like this. Now for the next step, I want to sort this list so we can have smaller areas and then larger areas. Let's say sort by key. That's a note to use in this instance. This note here allows us to use the area of the faces to sort the faces themselves. So we can now say area should be the keys and then the faces will go into the list input. Let me run this now so I can show you. Okay, some problems there in yellow. Let's see it now. Well, this one simply says the list input is not of the right structure. And that's because I forgot one step here. We need to use these little arrows to specify the correct list level for this node to work on. Let's change this now to level two. Like so. And the same for the keys. Run this again. And this time there's no more complaints. You can see now that the list of areas had been sorted from smaller to bigger values. Very nice. Next step, I want to get the biggest value from each list. For example, for this list here, I want to get this last value there. To do so, I need to firstly get the index of the biggest value, in this case, number four there. And we can simply do it using the count node like this. This node allows me to connect sorted keys to its input. And then it's going to give me the number of elements in each of these lists. Of course, that's one single number, so that's wrong. We need to now change also the list level to level two and test it again. There we go. So now that's correct. We have here five different elements. So that's a number five there. If I scroll a bit down, most of them are number fives, but some can be six and some can be four, depending on the panel. At least I know now we're on the right track. Next step, I want to calculate the index of the final list item. We have the number five there, but that has to become number four, for example, for this first list. So let's now double click here and say length minus one. These list item counts can become my lengths. And if I now minus the length by one, I should get the index of the last item in each list. Let me prove it now. And yes, we have now number four. That's the index of the last item. So everything works to this point. Moving on, I can now use these indexes to get the list of sorted faces and sorted areas. I can do so using get item at index. The index will of course come from here, from our previous calculation. And now for the list of area values, I can connect sorted keys to list. And now we run this. That should give me all the maximum area values from those panels. So I should get back 620 values, which is not the case right now because I have still over 3000 values. This is simply because I once again forgot to change the list level. So let's do it now. That should be level two. And this one can be level one. Like so. Run this again. And yes, now that's more like it. I have now 620 area values for the 620 panels in my model there. We can now copy and paste this note there. And this one, we will use the same list of indexes to obtain the biggest surface from each panel. The surfaces, I still have them here. So I can simply connect surfaces there to list. And now run this again. And certainly enough, that has given me 620 surfaces from all of my panels. These are the biggest surfaces of the panels. For example, if I look at one of them right now, if I now click on this panel and isolate it, as you can see, it has a depth to it. There's a thickness to the panel. So this panel here has maybe five different surfaces, not just one. However, for the purpose of coloring it based on its areas in relation to the other panels, I only need the biggest surface 
could be the top surface there, or maybe the bottom one doesn't matter. They should have relatively the same area anyway. What I don't care about is the side surfaces, these vertical little ones. And that's why I had to use these nodes here to filter them out and get only the biggest surface from each panel. So that's the reason behind this. Next step, let's make use of this information now to determine the color we will give to each panel. There's one step before we get there. We need to firstly remap these area values to the range of 0 to 1. The reason is we will soon define a color spectrum starting from one color and ending in another. We then want to say if a panel is the smallest one in the project, we should give it a starting color. Otherwise, if it's the biggest panel in here, I should give it the ending color in the spectrum. Any other areas or panels in between should get the intermediate color values on the spectrum depending on how smaller or larger they are compared to the smallest and biggest panels. So let's do the remapping now. Firstly, let's get the maximum area value from all of these panels there. So I can say maximum item, connect the list of area values to here, run this now. And we can see that's the maximum item. Next step, let's place a node here called remap range, this one there. And now we connect the items to the numbers input. For the min and max, we need to have 0 and 1. But here they are already the default value. So you can see there default value for min is 0. And default value for max is 1. So we have no need to do anything else here. Let's just run this and see what we have. OK, if I expand this now, you can see they are now mapped to the proper range of 0 to 1. So 1 will be corresponding to the maximum area value and zero will be corresponding to the minimum one from this original list. That's very good. Next step is for us to convert this numeric range to a color range. So now let's say color range here. And this one, as you can see, it needs a few inputs. Firstly, we need the area value. So let me connect this to here now. Now for the actual colors, this node here already has a default range for us, starting from red there, going to blue. Let's see if we can make use of that already. I can say here, geometry color by geometry color. So this one, it will override the geometry we have visible there in the Dynamo background preview using the colors we supply from here. Let's do that now. The geometry should be the surfaces that we have obtained from before. So let me see. They should be those we have here. So I can now connect 620 services to geometry. Let's now save the script and run this. Okay, that's done it. You don't see any color yet because all of these nodes here, they are overlapping our colors. So let's select them like so and right click here and say hide geometry preview. And here we go. Now we have a nice colored set of panels in the background. So yes, I can see now that the smaller panels, they have colors closer to red. And the bigger ones, they have colors closer to blue. So these are the smaller panels there. And where the form expands the most, that's where you have the biggest panels. So everything here makes sense. Anyway, the colors here are a bit faint according to my personal taste. So I usually try to give this node here a stronger set of colors. And that's how we can do it. We need to define the colors first using RGB codes. I have done that already. So I have them here. Let me copy them. Go back to Dynamo, make a code block, and just paste them in there. Now I'm sure many of you don't have this list, but don't worry. At the end, I will show you how to download this script where you also have this color list inside it. So no need to retype this yourself. For now, let's make another note here called list.create. And now I have to get one new input port for each color. And now we can start connect them to the list.create node like this. This is actually the most boring part of the whole process today. So if you don't like doing it, maybe you still need to. So now we have all 14 colors connected. We can now say this list here should go to the colors list of the color range node. Let's now save it, run this again. 
nothing has changed because we still have one more input to define. It is the list of indices we need to create for these colors. As you can see, I have here 14 different colors. So now I need 14 numbers between 0 and 1. We can actually do it very easily using another code block here and say 0 dot dot 1 dot dot hash 14. It's going to give us 14 numbers between 0 and 1, evenly spaced. Connect to here now. You can see the color has changed already. Now they are much stronger. I can now save the script and run this again. And here we go. You can now check out the background preview. I have now everything a lot more defined. Very nice to the eye. Okay. For the final step, we now need to bring these colors into the model because right now they only exist in Dynamo and that's not good enough. So we need to have another node here. Let's search for override color in view. That's the one there. And now you know the colors will be the same as those, so I can connect them to here. For the elements, you need to get the 620 panels from before. So they will be from here. Connect them to there. Looking good. Let's now save the script now and run this. Okay. Really nice in Revit already. As you can see, all the colors has come into the model. If I now select one panel like this and see is graphic override in this view. These are the colors from Dynamo. So it applies a color on an element basis. Nothing special there. But the good thing is it does it for us super quickly thanks to all the rules we have defined in the Dynamo graph. Now you can start tweaking the panel, maybe optimize them so their area differences wouldn't be so big. And then whenever you need to, simply return to the Dynamo script, rerun the algorithm, and see if the optimized system has been improved according to your requirements. Okay, so as promised at the beginning of the video, if you want to download this script directly and use it on your project without rebuilding it, just go down to the video description and use the link there to get it. If you, however, want to focus on mastering Python scripting in Dynamo, then check out my full Python course in the video description. If you like this lesson and want more like this every single week, make sure to subscribe to this channel now. For now, have a good day and I'll see you in the next tutorial.